there, future nurse. Now, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I bet you'll like this video. And if you do, be sure to head to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube for way more content than you can get here. And you can sign up for free. Now, moving on to the case study for electrolytes. So the nurse is caring for a client with the primary medical diagnosis of acute renal failure, secondary to treatment of a urinary tract infection with a nephrotoxic antibiotic. The client's morning basic metabolic panel, the BMP, reveals the following abnormal data. So sodium is 135, potassium 6.5, calcium 7.1, and phosphate 5.3. Wow, a lot of numbers there and a lot of key words. So question one, which electrolyte levels are out of normal range according to the client's BMP? So go ahead and pause the screen and try your best to answer the question in about 60 seconds or less. All right, so let's break this question down and let's see which values are out of normal range here. So as stated before, you should write down and write out these normal values at least 10 times per day the week of your exam so that you can memorize them. All right, so here we go. Normal sodium, that NA, is supposed to be 135 to 145. Now the BMP shows 35. Okay, cool. We're normal, but barely normal. <laughs> now potassium, that K+, plus, normally between 3.5 and 5.0. So at 6.5, whoa, okay, that's super high. Remember, potassium pumps the heart and the muscles. Huge risk for heart dysrhythmias. Now, in terms of calcium, that CA+, plus, normally between 9.0 and 10.5. So we have a 7.1 here. That is pretty low. And we know when calcium is low, well, then phosphate will be high since they work inversely. So phosphate is 5.3, which is high, as expected, because normally it's 3.5 to 4.5. So the correct answer is K, or that potassium, that is high, hyperkalemia, and calcium that is low, that hypocalcemia, and phosphate is high, that hyperphosphateemia. Now moving on to question two, which assessment data will be the nurse's priority to collect first according to the above electrolyte abnormalities. So once again, pause the screen and try your best to answer the question in about 60 seconds or less. All right, look at the key words here. The assessment data that is priority to collect first. So once again, any priority question, always think what kills the client the fastest. So in this case, we have potassium that's high, calcium that's low, and phosphate that is high. So we know that the three P's of potassium, remember, P for potassium is priority since it pumps the heart muscles. So with high potassium, we have high pumps. Huge risk for cardiac dysrhythmias like V-fib and even cardiac arrest, very deadly. So the answer is a heart rate and rhythm to collect. The client is at high risk for dysrhythmias due to that hyperkalemia, that high potassium. So once again, just remember the three P's of potassium. This is high potassium, which means high pumps of the heart. Now moving on to question three, which additional assessment data does the nurse anticipate in the client with hyperkalemia? So once again, pause the screen and try your best to answer this question. All right, so let's break it down. This question's asking for additional assessment data for hyperkalemia, that high potassium. So once again, think high pumps for high potassium. And remember, your top three here. We have peak T waves with ST elevation and severe V-fib and cardiac arrest, as mentioned before, and hypotension and bradycardia as the heart cramps up from that high pumping from that high potassium. Now, neuromuscularly, it'll be high as well, with increased DTRs, paralysis, and paresthesias, that tingling, and even profound muscle weakness. And in the GI, we have high pumps as well, so diarrhea and hyperactive bowel sounds. So in this case, the correct answer is paresthesia, that numbness and tingling sensation, muscle weakness, hypotension, and increased DTRs, those deep tendon reflexes. So remember, high potassium means high pumps. 
Now moving on to question four. What assessment data does the nurse anticipate in clients with hyperphosphatemia, that high phosphate? So once again, pause the screen. You got 60 seconds. Try your best. All right, so let's break this down. Always before looking at the answer options or even considering to answer, look at the key terms here. Remember, hyperphosphatemia is that high phosphate. And always consider what you know about phosphate. So in this case, we know that phosphate and calcium work as an inverse relationship. So with high phosphate, just think low calcium, signs and symptoms. So the top three signs and symptoms that you should know is trousseaux and tetany, as well as shavastics, or just vostics, and even weak Bs, so weak bones, blood, and beets. So the correct options is tetany, shavastics, or vostics, and trousseaux which is that arm to work with the blood pressure cuff on. And lastly, question number five. What is the underlying pathophysiology behind this client's hypocalcemia? So as you can see above, look at the case study and focus on the key words here. So let the question help you. So go ahead and pause the screen and once again, try your best to answer this question in about 60 seconds or less. All right, so let's break this down. This question is asking, what is the root cause of this low calcium, that hypocalcemia? Well, let the question help you here. The key term is that the client has acute renal failure, which is basically broken washing machines of the body. So the body cannot clean the blood and drain excess phosphorus out of the body and into the body. Naturally, phosphate will go up, making it high which in result makes calcium low. Now looking at the answer. Due to the client's acute renal failure, the client is unable to excrete phosphorus readily, leading to a state of hyperphosphatemia. Calcium and phosphorus have an inverse relationship, leading to hypocalcemia, that low calcium, in these clients. Exactly, so now you can see how knowing the patho first will ultimately help you understand what's going on in the body and finding the correct answers. Struggling to stay afloat during nursing school? Let me help you achieve our 96% pass rate by heading over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and signing up for free.